One of the easiest ways that people negate you as a human being is they relegate your perspective to an opinion. You see, an opinion and a perspective are totally different phenomenons and often confused. And so I'm going to unwind that a little bit. A perspective is something that I will suggest is merely an objective viewpoint that is actually constructed in a context of contribution. That you share your perspective to enlighten somebody, to empower them, to make a difference. Whereas an opinion is an entitled, rigid viewpoint that somebody has an emotional attachment towards and an investment in and is in defense of and will negate and deny any alternate realities without having the intellectual integrity to investigate the plausibility of those other perspectives. Highly opinionated people are among the most underdeveloped intellectuals that we have in our societies. Because people that need to form dogmatic and rigid views of what's true and real are people that have fear-based control issues where they need to satiate the mind of rumination in order to secure some foundation to stand upon. And their perspectives and beliefs and opinions become the architecture of their personal opinion-based reality. This is the basis of dogma, group thinking, intolerance, ignorance, inflexibility, black and white thinking, dehumanization, and everything that negates the existence and autonomy of other people. These people will lack empathy. They'll lack humility, humanity, concern, responsibility, or accountability because they are always in defiant defense of their opinion-based point of view. That is something to notice, because if you are somebody that wants to make a difference by sharing a perspective, if you have a high level of self-awareness, you will have ventured into a domain of the mind that is limitless and expansive, where you as the observer are merely present absent of any real experience of self, entirely unfiltered as you share something and you observe it coming from somewhere that nobody else could ever even comprehend because people stuck in a subjective state of opinionated reality have to always reframe reality as it comes to them to organize it within their own subjective state. They are the gatekeeper of their own reality through the voice in their head. Like a border control officer, the voice in their mind negates and rejects anything that does not align with what they already know and takes things that can be used to patch holes in what they believe to be true or want to be true. You know, they do their research online once they believe the earth is flat. Once they think the election is stolen, that's all they're going to see. And it doesn't matter if Fox News says it's true, it was stolen, admits to it to avoid going to trial and having bigger problems on their plate. Even when confronted by the internal communications, the full-throated acknowledgement of the very pundits that propagated these lies, knowing they were propagating the lies merely to avoid losing advertising market share during this period of time in human history where we had an unprecedented assault on the American democracy by our own citizens due to misinformation and propaganda. They did not want to lose advertisers to new, more radical news organizations that were pandering and catering to the previously indoctrinated masses of people on the right wing of our society. Those people were willing to go balls deep into conspiracy theory, and Fox News knew that there was another player in the game of propaganda, and they had to make a decision if they would 
refinance their already sold out souls to another level of evil? And to answer the question, were they willing to sink to another level of depravity in a society being ravaged by misinformation and mindless hate already? And their answer was absolutely, yes, we will. We will lie knowingly. We don't care who it damages, whose lives get lost, what it does to companies who have dedicated themselves to pioneering technology to actually make elections reliable. And we will lie about it with no concern about what the implications are towards the lives of the people, only to continue to acquire the billions of dollars in advertising revenue where we are paid merely for influence alone. And so the reality is that people that are opinionated and totally subjective are segregated from any objective reasoning, any imaginative capacity, any generative learning, and they often are so reactionary that many of them lack creativity or access to the capacity to create ideas independently of other people. That is why many narcissists copy and steal and sabotage is because they have deep-seated envy because they think that they're inferior. And those thoughts of inferiority are the actual reasons why they cannot create that they don't understand that the subjective reactionary mind is actually a secondary mind to the objective one and that every single human being possesses legions of creative capacity in their mind because every human mind automatically has to create an entire universe the moment you open your eyes. That we fail to acknowledge our collective brain power that I'm not saying that we manifest a physical reality, but what I'm saying is that the computer of the mind is the most profound computer to ever exist. A biological computer that transforms electromagnetic radiation bouncing off of objects, being literally inverted through the cornea projected onto a retina with photosensitive cells that transform specific wavelengths into action potentials that are organized in such a profound way that every one of these colors appears. And these neurons using salt will propagate action potentials generating electrical currents that'll travel through an optic nerve and that the brain will take that data and transform that data into a comprehensive three-dimensional reality. And the brain has so much power that it sees every leaf in every car, in every person, you have to actually create those people in your mind in order to experience them as outside of yourself. And that this illusion of reality, this projected reality, is so profoundly detailed that from the perspective of the observer, it occurs to them that it's absolutely independent of any neurological process, as if your eyes are just windows and you're sitting in there looking out a window in a, in a building when you're not. And so a brain that has that kind of power is only lending a tiny fraction of that creative capacity to the subjective, reactionary prison of the wakeful experience. And that these are people that just got triggered as children into an all-encompassing fear of reality in a way that they could not help it. And they have to create a reality to protect themselves. And so it's not personal that they do this, they just don't know. And there's many things that we don't know in psychology yet. And I wanna be somebody to help uncover those things and offer it. And that's what I do. And that's why I get negated.